It's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Coke. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. And today we are going to be talking about the band Whitesnake and specifically the song Here I Go Again. Uh, we're going to compare it to the two versions of it because uh, most people only think about Here I Go Again as the 1987 version uh, where the band had kind of reformed and re-looked with a new look. But uh, there was also a version that came out in the early 80s, what, 82, 83, somewhere around then. I should really know the exact date, but I've forgotten it already. Yeah. They don't put it in the video title like they do in this one. Um, and it, it has a very different vibe. Now, I really like the early version. Uh, but when you look at the early version, you can clearly see there was a decision made within White Snake to get rid of all the old guys that look like they're working on a farm, <laughs> or they should be in bluegrass bands, and turn their attention to effectively the glam rock era. Make them look like Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi's, the Motley Crue's, all of that sort of vibe of going with the big hair. Uh, so, of course, we must start with the the one that everyone knows, which is the Hero Go Again 1987. So, uh, and then we'll go back to the previous one. We'll do a quick break in between just to have a quick kind of 10, 20 seconds first thought on that particular video. Uh, and then we'll do a comparison discussion at the end. So let's uh, let's get to it. Here we go. Here I go again. Literally for me right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go yeah. again. Let's do it.
I don't think you can ever take 80s oh, rock like that. Seriously. There you go. White Snake, here I go again, 87. So quickly, under 30 seconds, just kind of give us your thoughts on that. Andy? I've seen it probably more times than I should have done in various guises. I'm yeah. On, on the music channels forever, but uh, we everyone knows this song, even you know if you're an you know, extreme metal fan or a, a mm. pop fan, it's, it's one of those, but... Just, I mean, you mentioned a moment ago, Dave. Rewatch value. I mean, there's so many cliches. You could, you know, you can make, you can pick out some of your favourite bits and and sort of discuss them, which I'm sure you will right at the end. But uh, it's it's classic for the time, isn't it? It's it's, mm. it's, it's 80s power metal, power rock, power ballads, stra- extravagant, flamboyant, very entertaining. Is it uh, what I love about not just this song? It's, as you said, it's a classic song. But watching videos from the 80s, it was the time when the 80s the videos were where people were just going fucking nuts on it. Your MTV2, this is the time, before the other video channels. Oh, you didn't have MTV2 then. in the 80s. Or MTV then, that's just what So it, yeah. MTV. But before this, before the 80s, there really wasn't, all you had was your top of the pops and sometimes you had a live performance. You might get a video, but usually it was some sort of performance bit. Half the time you just had to, they brought out a load of women to dance while your music was playing. And that was your entire way of getting it out to a TV audience. Now, in the 80s, you've got music videos. And what I love about looking back at them, they are of their time. But they're so much more interesting than modern music videos. In a lot, of, whether The performance videos from the 80s are so much more fun than the performance videos now. It was too serious. We, we've all watched this now. Look at the size of the stage over on as well, you know. But we're all smiling. Yeah. We're all, we've all, there were some funny as shit things in there. But I still love it. I absolutely love it. But Kirk? It is so spinal tap, isn't it? When you look back, and it just shows you the genius of that mockumentary. Yeah, and how and um, that was unintentional. I think there are moments of humour in there, even in nineteen eighty seven. But yeah, as you said, cliche after cliche, and it, it, it does offer even more entertainment value, doesn't it? Just think, can you believe that from that four years later, Nirvana, Nevermind, knocks Michael Jackson off the top of the charts? The gap is only four years, and you would think they're on different planets. The, the music, wouldn't you? Where well, that, that, that space yeah, between yeah. 87 and 89, the musical landscape changed. If you think about that, it's like we talked about Sepultura yeah. uh, and what was going on in 87. So you've got things like schizophrenia. By the time we get to 89, we're talking about a rise is coming through, that sort of thing. I mean, I, I, no, always mention, I always mention it. You know which album changes it? The real thing, Fifth No More. This, this is a year after Master of Puppets. Yeah. I mean, I don't, hey, pop, I don't <laughs> put this in the same genre. No, but yeah. this just gives you. But yeah. They weren't even doing videos at the time, so it's a no. big, big difference. Right, we're going to go check out the one that just says, here I go again. Uh, let me bring this one up, and we will check it out. Yeah. 
Okay, there we go. White Snake here I go again. Uh, so we've now seen both versions. Let's talk about comparisons between the two. Um, we obviously we have whilst the video was playing, so we've we shared it. But I guess if each of us taking turns, what did you kind of look at the two of them? What did you like? What didn't you like? Can you understand why they went and did the nineteen eighty seven version? <laughs> I can, and, and many many bands do sort of re-record albums and songs. Let's just first of all answer a question from for me. The eighty seven version was that include? Was, did they re-record the whole album? Just or, that song. So they just took the best song from sort of eighty two, re-recorded it and stuck it on the album. Of, I think it, I think that original eighty two one was released as a single and it had the potential, so they decided that actually looking back with a new lineup and reworking it would be the best way to actually bring it forward because there was elements of it that was just lacking. Yeah, um, I've, I've never been into White Snake. I do remember when I was getting into sort of metal when I was around ten years old, sort of early eighties. You see the album covers in the shops, mm. and you know they were quite sort of you were drawn to them. And it's sort of like I remember. I think a, a sort of semi-naked woman straddling a big snake. Oh, yeah, that, that is awesome. That <laughs> is awesome. No subtlety in that one. Yeah, that, that, that's heavy metal. That's heavy rock. That's the sort of thing I'm getting into. But I never got into White Snake. I didn't know they, they'd done a, a sort of early version and recorded in 87, which is obviously why we're doing this discussion now. Um, I, I don't dislike the first, you know, the original version. They are marked, you know, markedly different. Um you know, particularly the, the guitar tone. I, I think David Coverdale's vocal delivery is, mm. is very, very similar. Yeah, almost exact. In fact, you know, he's still at the same power, the same range, and, and, and the same high notes. So you know, that's that is really, really good. I, I, you know, I do enjoy the song. Um, what was missing from the original was the sort of the sort of the crunchy, simple sort of guitar riff that, that mm. sort of the chorus of the second version. It was kind of just sort of more sort of. Yeah. Like almost clean tone chords. Yeah. Um, the solo was just sort of little sort of nice sort of trade off as opposed to the sort of big epic. Mm. You know, on his knees. The solo you got on the on the new version. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think they're a million miles apart, but I, I can see sort of from a from a band progression mm. view and, and a, a money making <laughs> marketing view why you would sort of take that song and sort of give it an injection of. Power and eighties cliches, you know. Mm. So I think they they stand well individually, and I, I can see why the band done it. But I, I enjoy both versions. I, I I can't, you know. I, I did I did like the first, you know, the original. It, it wasn't sort of too markedly different from from the one everyone knows. And yeah, I enjoyed them both. So I think listening to the two, trying to think about the vibe because there's a very distinctive vibe on each of the particular the versions so on the original version the clean the picking clean picking of the guitars you don't hear that on the 87 version yeah, and that, that kind of gives you this nice kind of almost melancholy vibe so when you hear him talk about here i go again on my own walking down the only road like a hobo you actually feel like he's talking about he's sad about it yeah whereas in the 1987 version he sounds like he's angry about it like walking down the only he's like more powerful yeah. so the vibe changes from being sad and going on a journey and feeling melancholy about it to being angry and being, I'm going to kick your ass this time. So they, they, they almost changed the vibe by the, the feel of the song. I much prefer the drums on the original. He actually has some interesting drum feels. On the 87 version, he just strips that right back. Now, he served the song in 87, but he was much more interesting on the, on the, on the original. Did he, did um, he survive? The, the band can't close no, them out. Think, uh, yeah, I didn't spot the drum on the second one, really. I didn't notice who it was. No, I thought he... he, he I think he got cold. Oh. Unless they just put a wig on him. <laughs> I don't know, actually. She didn't need to check that. Uh, Solo, I thought, was awful on the first one. There was no point to it. It didn't really do anything. Even even bluesy bar rock solos are, are, are generally better than that. Uh, I love the oohs and ahs and the backing vocals. I thought that was great on the first. I felt that was really missing in the uh, second one, uh, in the 87 version. So, But I love the power that came out in the second. So there, there's elements I'd almost want to Frankenstein between the two to give you an overall version of it. Um, and also it was slower on the first one. But it just felt more, as, as we were saying, the first version sounds like a bar band. The, the second version does sound like an arena band. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't hear that first version in an arena. It just doesn't sound right, uh, and wouldn't have looked right at all with that sort of lineup. But uh, Kirk, your thoughts? The shameless Bon Jovi 
pastiche, which is the 1987 one, is the better of the two songs, in my opinion. It's more anthemic. The amount of reverb in there is just... It, 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 I don't know, was that impossible to capture in 1982? It's the, the original, it has more of like textures of blues rock bands, isn't it? Like Free and Boston. Yeah. It's a lot, it's more emotional than the 1987 one. You're right, the solo, I'm disappointed by that. You expect a lot more, especially, you know, a good progressive blues solo is more emotive, arguably, than any other style on the, uh, on the fretboard. I can see why they ditched the band because you are <laughs> never going to, with faces like that, you're never going to be uh, played regularly on yeah. MTV. In the video world. Yeah. yeah, and it is the 80s, so they were probably yeah. only in the 20s and looked like they're in the late 40s. It is. When you watch any video, any, <laughs> yeah. look, at, look at Duran Duran videos. Wrong, yeah. Yeah. You look yeah. at Duran Duran videos, they look younger now than they did in 1983. Uh, yeah. So that they, 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 they have a tendency to look two decades older. Uh, you can, yeah, there. Are, I think there are big differences. They're not subtle. The first one is, yeah, it, it's a product of that hard rock, blues, and they're aiming for radio. This one, the medium is MTV, isn't it? Yeah. And that's clearly where they need to be. And that did accelerate the sales of their back catalogues. So you're saying they've re-recorded a song that had great potential. Makes sense to do that. Uh, viewers can correct me I, this must have come out after Slippery When Wet by Bon Jovi because that changes the whole landscape of well, 87 I think yeah. that came out in late 86 didn't it the Bon Jovi yeah, yeah. one because there's not much there's not much yeah, time between them uh, but yeah you can see the uh, the impact of the poodle herd hard rock I mean I, I'm offended that people now use the term metal to describe music like this it's not is it? it's just classic rock her metal is a, a, a derogatory term that we use but this is actually objectively a good song. Mm. Both versions are. I, I think there's some unbelievable songwriting techniques in that. I really like the bass in the first one, the bass and drums, mm. doing some scale runs there. Um, yeah, I, as Andy said, I'll just finish on that. Whether you listen exclusively to extreme metal or you listen to pop music, you're going to know this song. And there's a reason for that. It's catchy. You remember it. Good hook. Every once. And yeah, good hook. And you don't need to take it too seriously. It's a fucking great song, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, looking at the second one, how do bands and rock musicians think that some of the, the cliches that we see in this video and many others, How? why would they think that is something I should be doing when I'm playing my bass, playing my, the, the, playing my guitar? I mean, good. Yeah. On camera. It looks it's really ridiculous. It sells records, yeah. yeah. You know, licking the strings. Oh, I mean, videographer, that that's a videographer yeah. thing to yeah. talk about. Just Someone else sticks the, the yeah. mic stand vertically. We've all seen that. The videographer yeah. said, look, I've worked with Poison and <laughs> I've worked with Motley Coon and you will do what what, what the oh. management's telling you because yeah. this will sell. And you're talking about 80% of your audience is girls. Yeah. Basically in those days. I'm surprised you yeah. didn't see the, uh, the classic with the drummer where he, he, he makes a strike and then... Yeah. Yeah. You know that, yeah. Well, at the end, when it finishes, it throws the stick out to the audience. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, let's do that one. Shooting the audience. It wasn't the bass player this time, was it? Yeah. It was the guitar player. There were some interesting moves, but there yeah. we go. White Snake, and here I go again. Now, if you enjoyed our video today, please do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care. Yeah.